Innistrad Midnight Hunt is approaching, and you can become a part of the pack. All pre-orders for Innistrad Midnight Hunt products will come with an all-new, exclusive Covert Go Blue Wolf Token. Every single sealed product, commander deck, bundle, everything that's coming with the new set gets upgraded with a CGB token for free. Get your pre-orders in and join the Midnight Hunt. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and we are going to continue trying to take everyone's favorite casual fun format in historic brawl and make it just toxic, tryhard, sweaty destruction as only a blue mage could. And what happens when you take the most annoying color blue and you combine it with the most powerful color green and you combine it with a commander that is cheap but makes a ton of mana and is a payoff in the late game of its own? Well, you get one of the best brawl decks in the format and that is Kinnon. The Bonder Prodigy, that is what we are trying to master today. So, Kinnon is a legendary human druid, green and a blue for a 2-2. Whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced. So, if you tap an artifact for mana, sacrifice a clue for mana. If you tap a Gilded Goose or Llanowar Elf, a mana dork for mana, they make extra mana. And extra mana is strictly busted in brawl but in magic in general five of green and a blue so when you have a ton of mana you get to use a sick ability look at the top five cards of your library you may put a non-human creature card from among them onto the battlefield put the rest on the bottom in a random order so if you have all this mana but nothing else to do with it you get to dig five deep in your deck and try to find the biggest strongest creatures in your deck and throw them straight onto the battlefield they can't be humans though so this deck offered to me a lot of deck building pitfalls and traps for for example, you could try to run it with all mana dorks. You could try to run it with all like uh, creatures that you could spin the wheel and hit and ignore other things. And uh, tuning it, getting it to kind of a middle ground was a bit of work, but I think I love where we've come down. So I've created a number of piles. This is the glue pile, just some good generic cards that make it into the deck. This is the interaction and protect pile this protects you and your kinnon and your board state and doesn't let the opponent combo off because we don't need a ton of removal we don't need a ton of sweepers we just need to survive because if we survive our deck will generally do bigger stronger things than the opponents most of the time unless they're using some i win the game combo and if they're using an i win the game combo we need counter spells to keep it from happening so that's why we have a number of counters instead of like bounce spells and other various things we could try to fit into these spots this is the big one i wanted i wanted to run a lot of ways to generate extra mana we need a bunch of permanents that are not lands that produce mana but I didn't want them all to be creatures. Like you can run a lot of mana dorks and I picked my mana dorks very carefully. So let's go through the kind of mana dork pile first. And this is hanging out in it because she kind of makes mana dorks, but they're still land so that they don't even tap for extra. We could also move Nissa over to the just good card pile. But um, we have Gilded Goose and Jasper Sentinel and Lanorals and Salty Ceruli Caretaker because those are one mana. So one mana dorks are awesome because we can play them then play Kin in the next turn and that doubles the mana awesome but then there are a million of these like two mana creatures that make mana and incubation druid i wanted because it's a mana sink of its own that can ramp up so it's a really good card on its own in this deck and then we have paradise druid which is hexproof so it's hard to interact with and we have prosperous innkeeper and this makes a treasure which they usually have trouble interacting with the treasure so i didn't want a bunch of creatures that if they got shocked and died or got swept by an anger of the gods we lost our mana generation that's why we run way more artifacts the artifacts are pretty key uh, a lot of decks come with ways to kill them but they're harder to kill than creatures and if you are landing a number of these artifacts to go with your kin and you're doing a great job you are ramping up moving your game plan forward getting ready to cast expensive spells anyway but if you happen to also play a kin in next to these they become super powerful i also didn't want all of my payoffs to be giant creatures that kin could hit i want spinning the wheel with kin to be 
like a good chance that we hit, but I don't want it to be the only thing we do because then we're relying on having Kinnon on the board. And if Kinnon dies two or three times, I want to be able to say, okay, I'm going to leave Kinnon in the command zone, but I'm going to play some powerful spells that draw me a ton of cards and let me just play a game without Kinnon. I wanted that as well. So the creatures that we can spin into are Vorinclex, the Kogla, the Nezahal, the Hornet Queen, Coma, the other Vorinclex, Creator of Behemoth, Ulamog, all really good. But then there's a number of other ways to use our mana as payoff, which is we got the Pool of Vigorous Growth. This is kind of a meme card, I admit it, but maybe with this deck we'll end up seeing if there are any cool 13 drops we can hit with it. And then we have Boon of the Wish Giver. Uh, that is a sweet card drawer because you can cycle it early or when you have a ton of mana, just draw four. But we have a lot of card draw. We have Overflowing Insight, Finale of Revelation, Pull from Tomorrow, Finale of Devastation is kind of card draw. We just go uh, get Crater Hoof and win. It's like drawing a million cards. You, you just win. Hydroid Crisis. Uh, we've got Gadric the Wizened, and we've got Blue Sun Zenith, and we have a big mana sink and mass manipulation. So a bunch of powerful, expensive, or X spells that just take over the game on your own. It doesn't matter if you have Kinnon on the board when you cast these. You're probably getting ahead. And uh, we have a pile of utility lands. Some that I wouldn't normally use include Turn Timber Symbiosis because we have huge hits for it and Crawling Barons because we have a ton of mana to pump into it. And of course, regular lands as well to help us curve out. Not that many of the dual lands in this particular version because I really do want turn one untapped land, turn two untapped land a good amount of the time. I might need to lean more into forests because if I draw all islands, my hand is kind of useless, but there are a lot of blue sources needed for things like mass manipulation and Gadwick. So it's a balancing act. It's a work in progress. I've introduced the deck. Took me six minutes. These intros are hard. I never know exactly how much to say, but I do want to make sure that I still give a dedication to a cool, a cool kids club member. So this one goes out to... Where'd it go? Eric Normack. Uh, Eric, thank you very much for being a member of the Cool Kids Club. It means a lot to me. Hit the join button below. Get sweet benefits. We're going to pick up a cosmetic in your honor. So many good ones that we could foil out in this deck because I haven't done that much um, in Historic. But I I have a feeling that... I have a feeling that Mass Manipulation is an excellent one. Going to play a lot of this in Historic Brawl. And is anything more evil than this? Maybe taking an extra turn, but probably this. Let's dive in. Let the nonsense begin. Calyx. Get to the Whopper. I love it. That was a really bad impression, too. I didn't put enough effort in. Get to the Whopper. Gosh, it's... Mm. I, I should not be allowed to have a YouTube channel after that. But here we are. Um, if we draw a ramp card, this hand is good. We just need one more ramp card to go with the Kinnon. We'll be pretty happy. I mean, you just gotta, right? You gotta be ready to spell Pierce that once upon a time. Actually, let's check for priority. No once upon a time. We'll play this tapped. <laughs> Isn't Historic Brawl great? All right, uh, I'm just gonna put this out. Unprotected on the play. Let's go. No other cards to make mana. Just going for it. Poor Kinnon. Out here naked and afraid. But this now makes two mana. We'll be up to six next turn. If we draw a green source, we Kogla. Glittering Frost. All right. Our opponent gets their ramp on. They attack for two. We draw the wrong land. But we have Spell Pierce now to protect, so we're probably going to Coma next turn. Cavalier of Dawn. What's it gonna do? Whoa, well, McKinnon! You got me. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll put this back in command. Thanks for the 3-3. Three, three. We could bring you back out and then play Dungeon Map. I think the problem with that is we don't have Spell Pierce, which I really want for the Calyx, but they'll be able to pay for it anyway. So I guess we just do this. That's the thing with Kinnon. You don't have to overly protect it. You just have to always be making mana or making big plays. The deck 
kind of runs itself. You don't have to freak out about defending this because as long as they're dealing with it and you're ramping, eventually you'll just make big powerful plays anyway. Kind of like Golos, but makes you play creatures in your deck. Which begs the question, why am I doing this? I could be playing Golos with no creatures in my deck. Yeah, come on back. I don't know if or when I'm going to kill Daxos. We don't have the mana for the Kogla. Pretty good card. Kuma, Kuma. May I has 3-3. Three, three. Let's see if they find a, a coma solution here. If they don't, the Sublime Epiphany is going to take over the game. They go for Mirari's Wake. Oh, oh no. You have to play a land. Play a land, opponent. <gasps> Cringe. Is it a lethal spell, Pierce? Oh, the land of shame post-combat. No. No. That's so sad. Um, all right, so if we pay six for this, we will not be able to cast a Sublime Epiphany yet, so let's wait. We'll play the Cultivator's Caravan, which can be our extra source of green, but I think we'd rather Kogla next turn. Let's be ready with the Epiphany. If we attack here and the Cavalier blocks, they can get something back. If they double block, we have to sacrifice a Coil anyway. So let's just run these into the Calyx and get it off the field. Yep, they go for the dubs. If we kill this, they get something back. If we kill this, they don't. Indestructible. And we pass the turn, and we prepare Sublime Epiphany for its scoop-inducing trauma that it cakes on a brain just always inflicts. It's a beautiful card. Cleansing Nova, destroy all creatures. Oof. Ah. Eh. E. That would be you. Um, let's copy a coil, and I'll draw. Yeah, I know. Not the nicest. We'll drop a thanks. It's just, it's only polite. All right, we got a 2-2 that makes enchantments cost less. Kogla? Kogla. Kill it. Monkey want to fight. Let's see if they have another board wipe. Even if they do, the coma will live. One life. All right. Uh, now we've got to be really cruel and stone rain them. I know. CGB, no fun to play Magic the Gathering with. Tail is all this time. Yep, they, they dropped the GG's. They know it's over. We're just gonna tap all their lands except for one to keep this indestructible, and there's no way they can deal with that board. Jackalope running some moot that has, like, flash and, like, double strike and gives stuff haste, and it does, like, a million things. Vigilance, double strike, haste, other creatures have haste, has flash, untap another creature. It's a ridiculous Naya commander. Nothing here deals with it either. I guess Kogla can fight. Fighting gets around double strike. And we do make a lot of mana with this hand. So we'll keep it. Anytime you have like two mana things, one payoff, and some other spells to go with your Kinnon, you probably have a good hand. I guess that's one way of dealing. 
<laughs> oh, baby. Okay. I mean, we could swan song that. I don't think that's worth it. I think we can do better. Maybe I'm wrong. These dragony sleeves. Ooh. Nice sleeves, opponent. Spit on them. All over them. So next turn we can hold up Denial and Swan Song after playing the Skyclave Relic. We could also play the Kinnon naked. But I think we're going to need Kinnon this time. Okay, that would have been a nice thing to Swan Song. Oops. So they're probably going to do nothing on their turn because they're going to flash in some moot. Or are they going to cast it on their turn? Because they can attack with the Clothis. Good question. Maybe I do just have to go for it, you know? Maybe I don't have time to mess around. Time to protect my Kinnon. Maybe Kinnon has to come down. And then we can mass manipulate. They won't have enough loyalty, right? They'll have five. So they don't attack with this yet. This takes seven, which is something. Some of the gods usually take five. Clothis takes seven. It's not quite like Heliod. Some moots here. Please don't kill Kennen. Don't, don't you do it. Owie. So strong. Vorinclex. So, do we Cogla? We can Cogla with two mana open. That's really good. We could also mass manipulate and just steal this, and then all our creatures have haste. If we mass manipulate, do we still have mana open, though? We do not. I think we can wait and get a better mass manipulation, believe it or not. Also, this protects Kinnon, because Kinnon's a human. We can return, like, Kinnon and Cogla can fall in love. All right. And we can return the Kinnon to our hand. Or we could counter a spell. Like, it all works. Clothis actually with nothing in the graveyard here to take advantage of. Escape to the wilds? Have a bird. <laughs> Let's not do that. That that that's a strong play. That that play scares me. And we have a pack leader. Opponent not done here. Oh, ho, ho. take him for the ride. Oh, and you draw your card to draw a spell when you really want it. Oh, it's a, a feeling unlike any other. We can attack and blow up the Mind Stone, but then we get counterattacked. I think that's worth it. Deramp our opponent. We can also use Decisive Denial to fight the pack leader or the Samut if they play that. So end the turn, discard some of these tap lands. Man, <laughs> pure overwhelming insight gasoline. Opponent's gonna make mana with uh, the Clothis. The Henge! <laughs> they see the stick and they scoop. <laughs> okay. I mean, they didn't know about the denial, and the stick could have been the Kogla and here, but I guess maybe they realize that Kogla's gonna attack and destroy the Henge anyway, which is the thing I was going to bait. What I was probably going to end up doing was decisive denial, Kogla fights the pack leader, and then we attack and kill the Henge the next turn. Iluna, the apex of wishes. So, is what we're going to have to wonder... Uh, this is a keepable hand. Uh, what we're going to have to wonder, is it the Iluna deck that, like, mutates into omniscience and combos off? Or is it something else entirely? Why are you on, like, a black platform? What's up with that? They're taking a lot of mulligans. I have a feeling this game won't continue, so let's appreciate the lightning bolt sleeves while we can. They didn't concede yet. Let's go get a land.
We hold. I'm not putting my kin in out. Not this time. We got things we can do here. We're not far behind. We can be patient. Good draw. Um, we can wait for letter next turn. Be really careful. Let's be really careful. They might counter a ramp spell in their position. Cycle. Could have tails ended the cycling, but that's always a little bit loose. Satyr's Cunning will make a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I think this is the combo deck. They try to mutate onto a token. Their only permanent is Omniscience, and then they just try to combo off from there. All right, we play Letter. We just have to be really careful about their nonsense. We can get a huge mana advantage if we're patient. We don't have any card draw yet, so we're going to need Kinnon to live so we can use the Spin the Wheel ability to get a big threat. That is a good spell pierce target. Drawn from Dreams can definitely fix their hand. All right, we've got three mana available. So we have Quandrix Command, Counterspell, Tail's End. Opponent needs one more mana to mutate. They're going for a ramp spell. That does bring out untapped lands. This can blow up their mutate. This counters that. I think we counter this. I think it's the right play. Finale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can get Agent of Treachery. Stone rain them. It is brutal, but it is an option. I think I have Agent in this version of the deck. I'm 90% sure I have Agent in this version of the deck. We could also wait, because if we can make one more mana, we get to, um... Yeah, if we're patient here, if we make one more mana, we get to Crater Hoof. Which might be lethal, it's close. No plays from the opponent. Let's spin the wheel. Reclamation Sage, no targets. Wait, no! Decline. Scare <laughs> myself. Right, didn't draw land. Caravan. That can have the mana for us next turn for finale to probably be lethal. Attack. I'm guessing some kind of card draw here from the opponent. Chemister's Insight. Don't counter that. I mean, we can't, so. All right, they're trying to ramp. One mana, one red. I don't think there's anything that's going to save them. We're going to get to activate Kin in here. We'll, we might hit a creature. And then next turn, we get to go get Crater Hoof. Awkward if we hit Crater Hoof here. Uro. Well, that's not going to stick around, but the value is undeniably good. Let's take him for the ride. Say hello to my little friend. Nope. They, they, they have no time for that. <laughs> They got somewhere to be. They don't want to see, like, these creatures be 16-16 or whatever they would be. Golos. Ah, the showdown. The big mana commander's showdown. Um, We have no mana creatures and no mana spells. The once upon a time could get a mana dork, but if it misses, we just do nothing. So I think this is a mulligan, even though it looks really nice. They've decided we're drawing Agent, and there's nothing we can do about it. But at least we have an idol this time, and we go first. Make big mana, make big creature with pool? Maybe? This card is kind of a meme. I would like to draw it against the other commanders, not against Golos, but here we are. <laughs> Here we are, let's put on the show. 
This one enters the battlefield tapped, so we'll get it out of the way first. Drover for the opponent. All right, they're ramping as well. So we can do this. We can do this. And we can do this. And we threaten the agent next turn. Or just a massive pool of vigorous growth activation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If they kill the Kinnon, we can still replay her. Him, them, uh, and then make a 4-4. Four, four. They go with Rejuvenator. They already have Field of the Dead. We can steal that Field of the Dead. Pull from tomorrow. Is that the play? So many cards. Six cards. I launch my attack. This might just make them scoop. Oh well. So sad, Gonos. <laughs> Give me this. It also makes our pull bigger. So they can Golos here. Let's see what they go get. Probably a Field of Ruin. Oh, they foretell. Wait, what? What? They're holding up mana? Crawling Barons can get a shot in. So can the Hall, but we want to draw cards here. Or activate the pool. Let's uh, attack with the Agent. They could double block the Kinnon. And we say go and see what they do with their mana. Nothing. Okay. Pretty big sign we have an instant speed play or we would have used the pool. Valky, they want to look at my hand. Okay, have a look. Have a look. So they might have a counter spell. Would explain a lot why they didn't play something last turn. So we'll see how they use their mana here. And the answer is... I don't think they're going to. So if they pass, we just activate the Kinnon. We don't put a spell on the stack. And we hit the Vorinclex. <laughs> the mana doubler. Okay. Now we're doing it. Um, let's pump this. Strong. Sublime Epiphany can copy Agent. Oh my god. Oh, it's gonna get ugly. They got no chance, man. No chance. So whenever they tap a land, it doesn't untap. So it freezes their lands while doubling mine. <laughs> it's so powerful. Oh, go ahead. Put something on the stack. No, no, come on. Try. Zero effort from the opponent. <laughs> we battle Shadowbane, who's, you know, got a really tough dude name. Or gal. Rada, Heart of Keld. Uh, can Brainstorm fix everything? Brainstorm misses. And we don't get green. We're not going to have green for, like, ever. <laughs> also, we've got a green uh, Veil of Summer here against an opponent who's not, like, they're not, it's going to be useless against them. And Nezal won't be good against them either. So this is a mulligan. This is so much better. This is insanely better. Opponent! I was supposed to do that. You're copying me. Coma? I mean, that's a big mana payoff, but we should probably just take the land. We'll hit the coma later. Turn to commander, possibly, for the opponent. And then they can start getting lands off the top of their deck. And just ramp. Ramp, ramp, ramp. All the way home. Okay. I think we just play this, say go, and next turn play Kinnon.
land destruction. Okay. Fun. Opponent's got a strategy. Let's see how it works out. This makes four mana, but we can't do anything else with it. So kind of risky. But now they'll feel like they should deal with Kinnon. If they don't, we get to pl play expensive things. Okay. Leave the Kinnon, blow up my other toys, huh? Okay, all my toys are dead. Should have floated a mana, but they could have just played the second main. No big deal. Jesus. Opponent's got it all so far. What we're probably going to do is bounce their creature and Quandrix command ours to block something. But let's see what nonsense they do to us next. Haha! <laughs> Yes. I can't believe I'm happy about waking the trolls. Not the best kinning game, though. It must be said. Drawn too many of the payoffs, not enough of the enablers. I guess if they want to buff this and hit me hard, it's their whole turn, so fine. Yeah, they didn't really want to. Sin Prodder. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card. Opponent may put it in the graveyard if they do damage equal to its mana value. Otherwise, put it into hand. Good aggressive card. Cultivate, gonna keep the mana moving. Man, do we need to draw something good to play this turn. Something to do with our mana. Right now, we do not have it. Commit. That is it. I'm never going to cast these green cards, though. Uh, we might be uh, shuffling up for a new hand. Hold. <laughs> have the opponent put the revealed card into their graveyard? I think we'll let we'll decline and let them draw that. Obviously, we have a counter spell, right? Away. Now, Oracle revealing a braid on top. Okay. Oh, everything's hard. Okay, it's gotta, it's gotta go, man. It's gotta go. We're probably going to get destroyed because we had to do this on our turn, which means... Wait, revealed? Oh, because they have to reveal their top card. Carnage Tyrant on top. I can pay six to get rid of that. And they have Star of Extinction. I would actually love for them to cast it. Ruin Blaster. Blow ups up a land. A dragon. Oh my god. Land Destruction the deck over here. Um, If they play that... If I let them put that into their hand and they play it, at least it's something they're using six mana on. I can't gain control of it, though. But I can st take their commander, I guess? Yeah, at least it's expensive. Oh my gosh, they drew Heroic Intervention. No! <gasps> That's so good! Okay, they're going after my land. They're they're not even launching Carnage Carney T yet. Yeah, they're they're selling out on land destruction. Okay. Okay. They're so, they're so good. Like they they are so good. They're so far ahead of me. It's a joke. We have nothing to even make mana with. We have been absolutely pummeled. Pummeled. I can't play Agent of Treachery. I guess I have to play the wheel. I can't counter the Carnage Tyrant. <laughs> like, it's all... It's a disaster, man. 
It's such a disaster. I mean, we, we I'm going to let them draw like everything because, hey, <laughs> they have so many cards to play. It's not like denying them cards is going to do me any good. And my life total is the thing that's under pressure. I mean, this deck is a kind of a work of art. At just absolutely destroying me. Like, from since the first second of the game, they've had it all. I mean, okay. Yeah, nice attack all, loser. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that's too much. Okay. got a block there or we just die and then uh, i can't block this because it has menace so i guess i'm blocking the reclamation sage or the ruin blaster i didn't even do the math because if i'm dead good riddance this game has been a nightmare a true nightmare i long for death Yeah, we can leave. We can just leave. It's fine. <laughs> Massacred. Sparkle, sparkle. I'm taking out a lot of rage on you. Just want you to know. They've got the new Sorin, which is like a dragon-themed commander. Let's see here. Uh, perpetually gain one less to cast, and you can pay any amount. Uh, okay. Conjure a Shivan dragon. Nice. Minus two. Three damage to target creature. Okay. Uh, no mana generators. Absolutely none. There's one. We'll keep. Hands without mana generators must go. This one is not great, because it only has one mana generator. We really want two. But it's a one mana, so we can play this on two and protect with miscast and probably commit something, then memory something. Oh, don't tell me you drew a lightning bolt. That'd be so brutal. Okay. Do we play around Lightning Bolt? They have something. Maybe their plan is to kill this, but if they bolted this in response, I would cry. I would cry a river of tears. Well, let's see. Can they kill it again? Easy. <gasps> so easy. All right. No big deal. We'll figure it out. We'll figure this out. It would be really nice to draw one more mana generator. Fabled Passage in your mono red. People do this. Do they think deck thinning is good? They might have a landfall card and they tell themselves that's what I'll use it for. I scry. All right, opponent is definitely a troll. Nice. Now watch, I'm going to blow it up. That that's what we've learned. All right. Counter that. How many uh, three damage spells do you think they fit into one deck? I mean, I to, to be fair, Lightning Bolt's awesome, and these bolts say Dragon in them, so that's probably how the opponent found them, by searching Dragon. <laughs> one for one, kill it all in Brawl. Okay, I mean, that's a good turn. I don't blame him for that. We also now, unfortunately, can't steal, can't do much of anything. We could commit, but if we play this, uh, we only have three mana. They're probably going to try to cast the dragon. Let's see if we can top another land. I'm really curious how, you know, 
over time how hard this card beats me if they start casting dragons for free. Okay. Um, send you away since you didn't activate it. <laughs> Seems fun. They'll get a free five drop. Let's see if it's any good. If we draw a land, we get to steal. Uh, our stealing their fires could be really good with Kinnon, actually. So let's see. You got a five mana play there. They did let this go into the deck. If we make them shuffle now, they might not get it back. Okay. Well, now they can... Wait a minute. Don't do that now. You've already cast two spells. Okay, good. I thought they were going to do it right now. Would not be a good play. All right. So we'll put this out tapped. Cast this. Shuffle away their commander. See how they like it. Pretty bad redraw, but it does involve Agent of Treachery and Sublime Epiphany. So they might have an awesome turn, but we can Agent their Fires and Sublime our Agent. Ooh. Ooh. Steal the Horn or steal a land? Ooh. Steal whatever dragon they play. Here's Torbran. Here's Regent. Now what's this say? Uh, when it becomes the target of a spell or ability, three damage to that player. So that'd be a lot. That would be a lot. Let's do the line. Let's do, let's do what we talked about doing. Stealing the fires, though, does unlock them. Maybe that's not the greatest play, but I really do want the Sublime Epiphany to happen. We could just steal their land. Hmm. Hmm. Really slows their fires ability down, right? Nah, we're stealing the fires. We're stealing the fires. Fires plus Kinnon to use all that mana is so good. Are we going to get roped for this? Yep, opponent took it to ropey time. And now the scoop, probably? No, not yet. Okay, it's fine. Uh, target non-land permanent, I guess, would be... What are we going to steal? I think the Torbrand's the best steal. So you go back. This is the creature I control. I'll draw a card. I'll take five. This is mine. <laughs> yeah! Uh, toxic Brawl player coming through. Ready for my crater hoof. Has haste. When it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain this and trample. So it doesn't give haste. So we're best off powering up barons and playing this. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. I, I don't think it's going to happen. Opponent's going to rope me out here. And then their head is going to explode. Red mages, man, they're just so angry. They just get so angry. So mad. How dare you steal my cards, you disgusting, disgusting blue gamer. We're still playing. Play this so that this makes extra mana, so we can pump it into the Baron, so it's kind of free. And then play Crater Hoof. And charge. Of course, the rope is probably going to end the game.
Man, and I didn't, I should have just put this on the stack, you know, just to flex. Just so they know if they're still around. But you think you're making me mad with your roping? <laughs> I enjoy every second. Get out, Red Mage. We shuffled away your commander. We stole your fires of invention. And now, the salt. Oh, the sweet, sweet salt. Elves's terrible hand. No mana generation. Great hand, mana generation. See how that works? I wonder if I'm supposed to brainstorm now. I mean, my hand is so good. And I could brainstorm later to make sure the cannon hits. Yeah. I have no patience. So what are we doing? We're going to play heart. I'm 90% sure we play heart here. So I don't think it really matters because we're going to draw bo into both of those pretty quick. This is like the best hand I think I've had today. I've had a lot of, you know, I like this. This is all ramp, which that's what you're looking for. I've had a lot of like payoff, payoff, one or two ramp. And if the opponent stops the one or two ramp, things go pretty tough. And that does make the game more interactive. Now we're going to see if our opponent's elf deck can just blow us out of the water, though, before we get going. It's going to be tough for them. All right, so. How do we get the max number of toys onto the field? Forgive me for tanking so much. It's kind of hard. The sequencing isn't very automatic. And in Historic Brawl, you're playing a bunch of one-ofs that you don't play every day. Although, you, yeah, I mean, when's the last time you played Mindstone, Sentinel, and Innkeeper in the same turn? Sequencing can be hard. See, this makes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana next turn. And we have Nyssa. It's so much. All right, they're going to try to slow me down. They're going to take out the heart. Shot through the heart, and you're to blame, Reclamation Sage. You give elves a bad name. Uh-oh. They're going to kill something else, too. I think they have a fight card. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't ask for more interaction from your elf deck, I don't think. Elves usually don't kill anything, so that's that's a lot of interaction for them. All right, Kinnon, come on down. Skyclave Relic. We'll make the mana for the Quandrix command if we need it. Can help us survive a fight. Okay, then. Wow. Wow. It's a, a true test of might over here. So we can bounce the Nyssa and eat the land. Assuming they can't interact too much here. It's a pretty strong play. Nice. My turn? Attack back. Now nah, defend Nissa. All right. 
assuming some of our stuff survives, next turn we can start activating Kinnon, but we are low on land, and we're like another interactive spell away from being really constrained on resources. Here comes Nyssa. Here comes 3-3. Three, three. Opponent passing the turn. <laughs> Dungeon map. Okay. All right. We're going to be spinning with Kinnon. And it's got to be good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're going to have to hit some good stuff. Some really good stuff. Guardian Project. Can draw a lot of cards. Can definitely draw a lot of cards. The land shall conquer you. But what else are you going to do? Elf and a random elf in your hand get plus one, plus one. Okay. And is perpetual, so it stays. No attacks. All right. These spins have to be good. That's pretty good. That does, that does a lot. Any reach over here? We got one reach creature. They scoop. Hornet queen, too much. All right, <laughs> there it is. And we are back for the post game wrap. And I figured out what to talk about at the end of the brawl videos. We're gonna talk about the friends we lost along the way. We lost friends when we mass manipulated their board. We lost friends when we cast Sublime Epiphany copying Agent of Treachery. We lost our friends when we cast a Spell Pierce on a Mirari's Wake. And then they played the land after. <laughs> Yep, the salt we had along the way. That's that's what Historic Brawl is really about. You can you can say all kinds of nice things about the commander community, but the online world, you don't meet your opponent. You don't make pals with your opponent. You smash your opponent. I really do hope that they give us some kind of a ranked queue for Historic Brawl to make all my sweaty try-hard shenanigans worth it. And also just give the people who want to play hard a place to go play hard without having to feel too bad about the salt. The salt that we find along the way. You have to enjoy the salt, I think. Learn, learn to adopt the role as a villain. It's improved my life. It might improve yours. Anyway, this video is dedicated... Or I'm trying to squeeze them into the intro and outro now to Zach Ufert. So Zach, thank you very much for being a member of the Cool Kids Club, hitting the join button below and getting some of those exclusive perks and benefits. Hit the join button, guys. Check it out. You might like it. And it's very cheap and it supports the channel. So, boom. This Hedron Archive, which I think I'm going to play in a lot of my Brawl decks, is for you. Lock it in. All right. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next video. You're cool.